Welcome to the knowledge clip about the nature and structure of international law. I'm Cedric Reinhardt. I'm a professor of public international law at Utrecht University. What is international law or public international law? International law is concerned with the regulation of international relations, mainly relations between states, states being the main, the primary subjects of international law. International law is laid down in sources of international law, processes that you have to go through before a norm can be termed a norm of international law. The main sources of international law are treaties and customary international law. Public international law is different from private international law. Public international law concerns the relationships between public persons, states, whereas private international law concerns relationships between private persons, like you and me. For instance, you drive a car, you have a traffic accident in Germany, you're a Dutch person, it happens on German soil, and the victim is an Italian person. Then the question arises, what court has jurisdiction and what law can apply? We are not going to deal with those issues in this course of public international law. There are different courses on private international law. Of course, rules of private international law can be laid down in treaties, and as we've just seen, treaties are sources of public international law, so there is a link between private and public international law. Public international law is law and is not politics, but obviously there is a relation between politics, and in this case, with international politics. Politics determines the law, and the law is not given by God, but the law is made by human beings, by politicians. Eh? So politicians will negotiate treaties. Once a treaty is negotiated, once international law has come into being, it will determine politics. Eh? So that's the other relationship eh? from law to, uh, to politics. No, uh, not all choices are on the table. Not all political choices are on the table. The law will outlaw a number of choices. For instance, using force against other states is unlawful. A few words about the history and the theory of international law. International law is a rather old branch of the law. The, old, the oldest treaty was arguably concluded in 1283 uh, before Christ. That was uh, a treaty between Egypt and the Hittites, the Ramses Hattusili Treaty. Uh, you can see the uh, inscriptions there uh, on the stones. But when we talk about modern international law, the main date is 1648, the birth of modern international law, the Treaty of Westphalia, which carved up Europe in independent states with full internal and external sovereignty. This is seen also as the birth date of the current system of international law, a system based on states. International law was systematized from the 17th century onwards. In the early days, the natural law thinkers were quite dominant and natural lawyers uh, would derive international norms from either God-given precepts, but uh, in a later age just rational morality, what uh, would be moral would also be law. And the main feature, uh, figure there is Grotius or Hugo de Groot, the Dutch uh, scholar from the 17th century. Later on, however, in the late 18th and 19th century, another strand of re legal reasoning in international law became dominant, and this is positivism. And positivism would not look at morality as a source of law, but would look at the consent of states to be bound. Under positivism, a state is only bound when it wants to be bound. For instance, states are not required to sign and ratify a treaty. If they don't sign and ratify the treaty, for instance, on climate change mitigation, they are not bound by the treaty. It is not a wrongful act not to sign a treaty. A few words about the basic elements of international law, which are going to be discussed in this international law course. I already alluded to the sources of international law, the processes through which international law comes into being. Treaties, customary international law, 
but also general principles of law and some subsidiary sources of international law which we will address. The subject of international law, as I already said, mainly states, but there are also some other subjects, like intergovernmental organizations that haven't been established by states, also armed opposition groups, and to a lesser extent, multinational corporations and non-governmental organizations. And last but not least, individuals have also been considered as addressees of international law norms. Jurisdiction and immunity is also an important element of international law, jurisdiction referring to the authority of states to enact and to enforce laws. Immunity is the other side of the coin, meaning that if a state has jurisdiction, it might just happen that the person over whom jurisdiction is exercised enjoys in immunity because it is a very important person and then the procedure cannot go through. States have certain obligations under international law and their responsibility could be engaged when they violate their obligations. The consequences of such violations are dealt, dealt with under the law of mainly state responsibility. States sometimes have problems with each other a dispute arises and then the question arises who can settle that dispute. We will see that there are a number of international dispute settlement mechanisms, the most important one being the International Court of Justice based in The Hague. Not all of you might have a career in public international law, but most of you will do something with law, with national law possibly. But international law has a role to play in the domestic legal order, in the national legal order, especially in monist systems like in the Netherlands, where you can invoke norms of international law, at least in certain circumstances. We will discuss that in relation to treaty law, the sources of international law. Finally, <clears throat> there are some specific fields of international law which uh, you might want to explore later on in the second or third year of your bachelor or in your master. You find an overview here. In Utrecht we put the emphasis mainly on human rights law, on law of the sea and environmental law and obviously also on European law which has become a rather autonomous branch of public international law. I wish you good luck with the course.